The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. Well, it looks like um, the young lady from Hong Kong made the world right again. They're going to take away that extradition bill, and the market uh, for the Hang Seng is up 5%. That's what sent us moving uh, early last night when they found out that that's what she was going to do. That was the pre-indication, and the Hang Seng was up 1,000 points. It was coming off of that uh, ABCD pattern that we'd looked at several times, and uh, well, that's a heck of a move in one day, and that's just the beginning, possibly. So we'll pay very, very close attention to that. Uh, one thing that's really interesting, folks, I posted a chart for the, both the FTSE and the uh, DAX, and you'll see that they both have completed uh, Gartley patterns, uh, one at the 50% level, the other, at which, which is the FTSE at 61% at the uh, at the DAX. It's really funny to watch the politics going on over in the UK, folks. I mean, my gosh, I thought it was bad here. Man, it's ridiculous over there. I have to share with you something that Mr. Z uh, brought to our attention uh, last night, uh, he, he sent me some things to show us uh, the fact that we have a silver. Hold on a second here. I want to get this in so we can uh, take a quick look at it here to show the silver market here. No, that I don't have to worry about that boat, uh, dear. You don't. You don't have to worry about that boat. <laughs> Thank you, Maria. Okay, let's move over here, and uh, you'll see that's the silver. But here's here's what's here's what happened last night, folks. We had a really interesting spot here uh, in silver to take a look at it. Let me get this up here to let you see it, so you can see what was going on. Here it was a combination of the silver and the gold together. This was last night, probably pretty close to. Uh, around 11 o'clock at night, uh, no, 10 o'clock. It was around 10 o'clock at night. Uh, you'll notice that uh, silver had a high here of uh, 1970. Uh, the, the, that was the price that Mr. Z had po posted on his chart, which was the 78% level from several years back. Now, what I wanted to do is I wanted to find out what's going to happen to silver here because you had a beautiful ABCD pattern, a 36 cent drop. And so what I was doing is I was watching it very, very closely because it it trades all night long with some really nice volume. But you can see here, let's just get this up here so we can see it uh, real easily. Just, just get it here one second. There we, and then we should be okay. You'll be able to see here, you'll be able to see it made a nice little uh, Gartley there. 36 cents down, and as we know, the harmonic number in the uh, silver is 36 cents, and that move up was 18 cents. So that set the thing in motion that now all we need to do now is get it above 1970. And it could go to the moon, to the moon, to the moon, to the moon. But we'll see if that's going to happen. Uh, a lot of it should be some resistance up there at 1970, but but who knows? Here's what's here's the important thing to look at. Let me let me give you my two cents worth. Here is the open interest that's been going on for several. Oh my gosh, at least a half a dozen days or more in both a gold and silver and platinum. Those are the ones you don't see plat. Well, you, there's platinums there, but you don't. Uh, they had a slight increase in that one, too. Uh, this was open interest was dropping on those days. Okay, now, last night, they were three hours late posting the open interest figures at the Merck. I don't know why, uh, but they were. And if you take a look at this, you're going to be able to see here that we actually had increases in open interest. Uh, pretty good increase in the gold futures, almost 30,000. Uh, pretty good increase in the platinum futures, uh, 3,600 when you compare it with 88,000. And silver, really relatively meager at 6,900 into, into a quarter of a million. But that means people were, they're really excited about buying that breakout. This is the first time in seven days that we've had uh, increases in open interest. And I don't know if the people are coming late to the party or it's just getting started. You know, you could, 
pay your money and take your choice. But uh, that's what you're looking at. What's interesting is, is even though the thing from Hong Kong was very, very friendly to stocks, you'd think that the the risk off would be uh, coming, a uh, risk on would be uh, no longer uh, 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 important. And so you'd think that the gold and silver would have sold off, but in fact that they didn't. That's a that's a pretty good a pretty good indication that you got to watch these markets, you know, from a technical basis. Uh, by the way, at the break, we're going to have Bill Meridian of Cycles Research, Vienna, Austria, as our guest, and I think that'll be fun to watch him. Now, I wanted to share with you uh, some information that uh, John Jameson has shown me over the uh, past uh, oh, 18, 18 months or so that we've been working on that looks very, very interesting, and I'd like to share it with you here uh, for just one second as soon as I can get it up here to, so that we can look at it easily enough. And where did I put it? Oh, shut the front door and raise the rent. I had it right here in front of me. Now I don't know. Oh, Larry, 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 Larry. Oh, here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is. Okay, let's get it up here. This is, uh, I want to show you what this is, folks. This is really exciting because it has volume involved with it, which is really, really exciting here. This uh, line that you're looking at, the blue line in the middle, is the, uh, the accumulated uh, price over the accumulated volume. And as you can see, once you get to the second standard deviation, which is the top of that silver market up there at uh, 1969, when you get to that level, it is usually very, very hard to get past it. You'll notice that the purple line is the first standard deviation. The second one is uh, the thing. He does both, John. He, he, is, he is both. He does both uh, analyst and uh, and uh, trader. He, he, he's a smart guy. Anyway, uh, that's a part of it. There's some other ones with gold that we've been watching that look uh, real interesting, too, but uh, really exciting to see how the volume, you know, moves the, moves the market to uh, make the thing move here. Okay. Now, let's take a quick look here. Uh, we have a question coming in. Hold on. Let's see what it is. Uh, using stuff here from me to use make money. Okay. Well, that's okay then. You, John, no one can do any better than you do, buddy. Just do your own thing, pal. You're as good as it gets. I, I've seen it all, and I can honestly say I think you're as good as anybody I've seen, and that includes a lot of people that I've known, and I'm talking about Frank Tauscher and, uh, you know, a whole bunch of other guys that I know. Uh, through the years, Frank is probably the greatest I ever met. He, I, he was, he was by hands down the best trader I've ever met. Uh, but uh, that's, uh, I knew Amos Hostetter, but I, I'd met him just a few times. I really didn't know him at all. He, I saw his, I saw his, his runs and and what he had done, which was good. But Bill, but no one, no one could do what. Uh, what, what Frank Tauscher could do. Uh, he was the best. Uh, oh, he's asking me what the next pre in the in a British pound. The British pound has done what we thought it was going to do. It's had its first really good rally, and uh, we were expecting it to get up to that one. I think we got almost to that 122 level, and we did it in just a matter of a very, very short period of time. If we take a look at this, you'll be able to see here that we had a lot of support down there when we hit that double bottom. Let's get this up here so we can take a look at it. Uh, we went from uh, 119.70 and we got up to I think we're 123 or something today, or so, you know, which is a pretty good run considering the things are so hectic over in the UK. Whether this is a short curving or not, I don't know, but that's it. The, the euro uh, has rallied uh, just about uh, 100, I think around 80 pips from the bottom, which is about normal. So that's going to be the first indication. But the, the key to that was the uh, was the U.S. dollar index, folks. It was a perfect ABCD. I'll post that. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, let's take a look here at this euro on a weekly basis. We got down to 109.40. We rallied up about 80 pips to that 110 and change. You know, folks, uh, th this is a weekly chart, and um, just because the euro had a nice rally and just because we hit that ABCD in the dollar index doesn't mean this thing is, uh, is over because we could easily go back above that 99.20 level in the dollar index with the further depreciation uh, in the euro. And, and possibly the pound, but they've come off here very strongly. That's a that's a possibly a very good sign. We had a beautiful butterfly pattern that we talked about. I think we I think we even uh, mentioned it uh, uh, yesterday in the uh, in the euro. Yeah, I'm sure we did. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, I don't know if I can or not. But anyway, it was uh, it was right down. I don't see it. So uh, it was you know just about nearly as perfect as it could be. You know, looking at that hourly chart, and uh, so. It's made its first objective. That's all I can tell you. That's uh, basically, you know, what we're watching. Um, regarding the uh, the silver, you know, it that number that uh, John looked at, uh, 1969 was the high. Uh, we're trading at 1956 or something right now. We could easily take that out without any trouble at all. So we need to. Uh, you know, watch it because these markets might go ballistic. Look what happened in, uh, you know, in some of these other markets that we've seen uh, go ballistic. Uh, but, you know, oh, here it is. I think this is the butterfly. There we go. Let's get this up here. We were able to see it. Here's what we were looking at on the air yesterday. Uh, we got down to that uh, 109.30. And uh, today I think we got up to 110, uh, back to that old resistance level around 110.30. That's about, uh, I think, about 90 pips. The harmonic number is usually. 80 pips in the euro so it's got to get above 111 and then it could probably have some legs we've already had 
a pretty good, a nice move in that British pound. You know, it's moved, uh, it's moved quite a bit. I haven't checked it yet this morning, but uh, the last I saw, I think it was pretty close to 123. Let's just take a quick look at that pound and see where we. Oh no, we didn't. We got to 122 is what I was looking at. We got to 122. We had made a low down there at uh, 119.40, so it it rallied uh, 250 pips, which is a is a substantial. It is a substantial amount. So sort of pay attention to that as you're as you're looking at some of these things. But uh, that's the main thing that we're we're focusing on uh, today. Uh, any other questions that you might have? Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. That's the main thing that we want to be looking at here. I've covered the open interest. Uh, let me see what I did here. I wanted to show you. This was the one I was trying to find. Uh, uh, this was very. I was doing this last night uh, with John because. Uh, I'll look at bonds here in just a second. Maria, if you'll give me a second, you'll you'll see here, this is that same thing that we're looking at. This is that accumulated volume over accumulated price. This is a different way of looking at the market profile, and it's based on the standard deviations from the moves, and this is how these algorithmic traders work. What John did was he, he broke down one of the codes of one of these algo traders, and that's exactly what they're doing. They're selling at the first and second standard deviations, and uh, based on uh, you know how volume acts and it's it's really quite exciting to watch it and if you look at it just with a b c d you can see some really great similarities in there that are easily traded we today i mean last night in the in the the gold in fact one of the reasons why we were watching it so closely it did exactly what we wanted to do let me put this up here again just to remind you when silver was making the a b c d you'll notice that the gold went from uh, the, the uh, 15, uh, 59, what did it do? It dropped $17, exactly, to 15.42. And what has it done? It's rallied $11. I mean, that's pretty good. So we'll see. Uh, do we have a shooting star in the move? Let's take a look at the old shooting stars. We love these shooting stars. So let's get one up here, take a quick look at it if we can here. Uh, shooting star. And you want it in the December, so we'll put the D in it. And we'll take a look. Uh, no, there's no shooting star here in the December as of yet. Um, no, Maria, there isn't in one. There's not one there that I can see. Let me bring this up so the folks can see it. Uh, there was one. I hold on the daily, but that. That was a long, on the weekly, but that has since uh, they shot that shooting star out of the. Oh dear, just a minute. This is I'm really having a hard time moving this uh, thing around here to get it there. There we go. Uh, here, here was the one that uh, the, the shooting star that we were talking about was. Uh, let me get this up here. It was in the uh, in the notes, I believe. Let's just get this so we can see it easily. Those are very rare pa patterns, folks. So when you do have them, it's uh, it's quite uh, quite amazing. Now here 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 was the uh, this was the week before, but because this is a monthly chart. Let me just get this up here so you can see it. We're still up near this area, that 132. That's the 78% uh, level. But the one you were asking about was the shooting star. Nope, that's not it either. Let me just give me a second here. Oh, here's the one. Okay, this was not. Let me show you why. Uh, it, because it's based on the close, Maria. If it, if it, what happens is, it, it might be on a TLT. I think I have the TLT. Just give me a second here, because I am watching these. Because, folks, you know, I've been doing this business for long, more than most of you guys are alive. And uh, you know, they've they've tried to give me tripe and tell me it's uh, filet mignon, but this thing with the Treasury bonds and negative interest rates—that is the biggest crock of baloney that anybody is ever going to get. I mean, trust me on that one. I'm, well, just don't trust anybody. We know we know we know what the uh, translation of that is. Okay, here is the the uh, TLT as I see it uh, from yesterday, I believe, and we'll take a quick look at it here. <clears throat> <coughs> Sorry. You'll see here. There's not. There's not a. Uh, there's not a, a hanging man or a, a pattern there at all. But you know, I, I all I all I can tell you is, folks, that uh, is there anybody in this room that's listening that is going to do in negative interest rates? I mean, hey, come on. You, you're gonna you're gonna give someone your your money, and they're not gonna guarantee it. 
and they're going to charge you for it. Now, that's really a good deal, isn't it? I mean, the only thing is it's got to be people that have no skin in the game that are doing it. You know, that's uh, that's not a bad, you know, it's not a bad idea, I guess. Who knows? <laughs> okay. All right, let's move on here and uh, see what the next thing is going to bring. Hopefully we're going to have uh, Bill here uh, at the break, and we should be fine. And he will be coming up at the break. I just heard from him, so he'll be ready. And, of course, he's always got some great stuff. And, gosh, we got to give him a big uh, salutary hello for his move in bonds and gold. My goodness, I mean, we've had some uh, tremendous moves. From, and the stocks, too. You know, he's been spot on. So you got to give the guy uh, – Give the guy his due, along with uh, some of the other folks, Mr. Z and Dudette, everybody, and even uh, Maria. Boy, little Maria nailed those bonds uh, right to the old hog pen. Very good, very good. That was uh, another one that's moved really, it's moved up seven cents now uh, in the hogs, which is really good. So we'll keep a very close eye on that one. But we will have Bill Meridian coming up at the break, and uh, we'll have to see uh, what he has to say, and then we will go from there. Yeah, their, their gators got it. Do the work yourself and buy a safe. I think that's correct. I, or mattresses or us. That's another one. So we'll see what's happening. Uh, in the bar. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we're talking with Bill Meridian of Cycles Research, Vienna, Austria. Bill, are you there? Yeah, hi, except I'm in New York. Oh, well, the old New York, Bill. You have a place yes. there, too, don't you? Uh, that you bought just, a yeah. just outside of Princeton, New Jersey, where I'm sitting oh. right now. Oh, very good. Bill, I have to give you uh, accolades, buddy. I mean, stocks, bonds, gold, gosh, you've just said these were going to be spectacular moves, and you've been absolutely correct. Uh, everybody talks about it, and we want to congratulate you. And, of course, just like the restaurant business, what's on the menu now? <laughs> you want yeah, well, to tell let, us what you – Let yeah, me just ahead. say this is the reason I've been working on cycles all these years because – that's how those things were done. I mean, when the, when all, if you look at numerous different cycles and they all point up or they all point down, what other conclusion can you come to? But people out there don't want to look at it. But there's some, you know, I just uh, mentored a young man. He's uh, Irish, going to a Dutch school, getting his MBA, and his thesis is in cycles, and it's been written and accepted. So things are getting better. This is at the university level. They're they're doing cycle stuff. Yeah, yeah, I got the paper well, right here. I can forward it to you. Yeah. Uh, it'd be and, over uh, my head. That's okay. I just listen to what you okay. tell me. Oh, Shucks, that's okay. all I need. <laughs> all right. What do you want well, to start just, with? Uh, just, the monthly S&P cycle? Yeah, well, uh, stocks, I have stocks likely to rally. Bonds flat to down in September, and gold is still in a rising phase. So uh, that's the summary. And if we go to the monthly S&P cycle, I mean, we're there right now. This chart... I just uh, you know, I flew in and then I had to drive to Baltimore and I just got back, so I'm about a day behind here. So the decline yesterday is not in this chart, but now this brings an interesting. If you look at that consolidation, you know, I once, um, you know, we used to have these debates with Art Merrill. Art, what's more important in a correction, time or price? And uh, in this case, I think it's time because um, I expected, and everybody who does the LEA wave su suspected, that we had a, an A wave down, a B wave consolidation, and we needed a C wave down. But, Larry, you know where the, the way markets work. As soon as everybody knows that, what happens? It doesn't mm – -hmm. the market yes. you know, skunks you, as we used to say. Yes. And, and uh, first of all, um, we go down uh, one more. Two you breaths. bet you take the breath. Well, you got it. Look at the advanced decline line. I mean, it was only like uh, 22 counts, 22 points or issues from a new high. So mm -hmm. um, internally, you know, the stocks are not um, – uh, stocks, you can't say the majority of them are in decline. The advanced decline line looking like this. Mm -hmm. And even if you go down one more and you put it on a 10-day moving average basis – I mean, still, now you've got uh, back there in May on a 10-day moving average basis, you have a low, and then you have a higher low in August. Mm -hmm. And uh, it looks it looks like a uh, triangular formation, but my guess is it will break out to the upside. And um, if you look at, uh, I always jest that uh, investors are like uh, dispirited infantry in, in a Napoleonic battle. They see the elite Coldstream guards coming over the hill. They drop their muskets and they run away. And the uh, sentiment goes from extremely bearish, extremely bullish to extremely bearish very, very quickly. Like the AAII sentiment percentage of bulls, the four-week average is 24.4. That's among the lowest readings in the 30 years of the survey. It's significantly mm -hmm. lower than it was at the December 2018 bottom. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it went, if you remember that week, uh, the market declined and the percentage of bulls went up and the next week the market got clobbered and this this bullish percentage i mean bears are now almost two to one over i think it's 40 percent versus about 22 uh bears over mm -hmm. bulls and if you look at what people are actually doing the total put call ratio 20 day moving average is more than 12 percent above its 200 day moving average mm -hmm. And um, so you don't see it by opinion. You don't see uh, – I mean you see bearishness by opinion, mm -hmm. by trading activity. And uh, this this mm -hmm. level right now, uh, it's, uh, since 2000, it's only happened once before, March 20th, 2008. That's the uh, the way the put call looks like. And we already looked at mm -hmm. the and, – and then, of course, there's the spread. Bonds going up, stocks going down. The spread between the two has just gotten to an extreme. And so mm -hmm. another reason we're probably going to get a strong September for stocks and a sort of a blah one. We'll get to bonds. <clears throat> and the, the other thing is um, I read there's an excellent service, Sentiment Trader, sentimenttrader.com. But the uh, writer pointed out that uh, funds have been flowing into what he calls safe haven funds. I, I noticed this too. Uh, minimum volatility funds, gold bonds, and they're going out of aggressive funds like actively traded ETFs. And that has swung to an extreme. So there's excessive caution no matter where you look, 
And of course, you know what the market likes to do with that. And, mm -hmm. and so um, we could, let me just get back to the, to the uh, PowerPoint here. Uh, if we look at the bond monthly histogram, which is on page six. Okay. Now notice, now as I said at the beginning, when everything lines up, look at this. If you're back in June and look at July and August, all you need, those are static cycles. That is, they don't change very much. Dynamic cycles are extracted directly from the data. Those are the weekly and the monthly graphs I've been showing you uh, all these months. And everything pointed up for July and August. So what other conclusion could you come to? Now look at September. It's, uh, you can't say it's weak, but you can't say it's strong either. So it's, it's not that it's turning weak. It's just not as strong as it was. Now let's check mm -hmm. out on the next, here's the key, is the weekly bond cycle. And you just hit a sell signal a few days ago. And it trends, you'll notice it trends in an irregular pattern down for the rest of September. This is on the U.S. 10-year note. And now let's take one last look here at uh, the monthly bond cycle. And you'll notice it doesn't turn down until October. In fact, it just shows a period of about six weeks on the downside from the end of October. That's not even six weeks. What am I saying? A period of about two to three weeks on the downside. And so you've got, to summarize, you've got the annual cycle of the year is flat. The weekly cycle is down. And this cycle is still pointing up. So you conclude it. Bonds are still in a bull market. But it is going to be a flat month. And if you hold, I had the bond ETFs in my personal portfolio and in my weekly report, Cycles Research Early Warning Service. And I took profits because if I can't see them going up, I can't see them going down. It's, it's sort of too dangerous to short them. You could probably squeeze a short sale in here somewhere. But holding it long for a month is sort of like a return-free risk. They're not going to – odds of them going any higher or not high, why bother holding them? Mm -hmm. So right now, I don't really have any position in bonds, but I would like to say I've been reading a lot. Uh, oh, the um, – yeah, I got this question of Baltimore. The yield curve inversion, um, as some guys who have been around for a longer time pointed out to me, longer than I've been around, the uh, long-term rates, the 30-year rates, have gone above the short-term rates. It's not the other way around. It's not that the short-term rates have gone up indicating a liquidity shortage everybody trying to borrow money it's that the long term rates when uh, the long term rates declined and so it's the other way around so i could not i don't take that as a screaming sell signal as a yield curve inversion but i'm thinking now and i spoke to a couple people who have been around as long as i have been and i look at this monthly bond cycle and i say could we be headed to a negative interest rates and if you remember, you know, one of my younger friends said, um, a guy from London said, negative interest rates, could such a thing happen? I said, sure. In the 70s, you had to uh, pay a rate in order to hold your, uh, your funds in Switzerland. They had a negative interest rate for a while. And you've got some around the world right now, and I think that's the direction it's headed. So I don't think the bond market is going to – I don't think the bond bull market is over. Wow. Hey, got, stay with us, Bill. So we got to pay a few bills. Yeah, we'll be right back with Bill Meridian Cycles Research, Vienna, Austria. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South Africa, African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed Designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back with uh, Bill Meridian of Cycles yes. Research. Bill, I've posted the chart of the gold. Uh, I think okay, that's what cool. I've got up there, so... Yeah, well, I'm just pointing out it's another case of, if you remember, the cycles actually, the weekly and monthly cycle actually pointed down in June. And um, uh, I mentioned, I think it was on your show, it was in my reports, I said, well, if that, if that is how it behaves when the cycles are pointing down, then there must be some other much bigger cycle at work. And I always caution people who are getting into cycles work. I said, it's not that I think, and I know, I know Robin Griffiths over in England agrees with me. It's not that the cycles are wrong, but there's some bigger cycle, and we just don't have enough data. And as I always like to joke, you know, uh, the cycle wiped the pharaoh out of all his wheat positions 3,000 years ago, but we don't have the data. And so, and as uh, Elliot and Dow both said, a sideways movement can be a correction. So that set the stage. And then, of course, if you go down to the next slide, you can see the seasonality. Look at that, June, July, August, September. September is the single strongest month, and I want to remind everybody that these are bars of expected return. In other words, the odds of the gold going up in August are about 60%, in September at 61, but the percentage gain is much better. So when you multiply the two together, that's the reason you get this big discrepancy between September and August. So mm -hmm. seasonally, you're in the strongest months to hold gold. Now let's take a look. Let's go down one more. And there you have the weekly gold cycle, and you notice it tops at mid-month. Mm -hmm. So for the next two weeks, there's really nothing to worry about here. And if you go to the weekly, I mean the monthly, which is right below that, you'll note that that also tops around mid-month. Mm -hmm. So, but the last time they both topped, we got a sideways movement. And what I'm not, what I should have included in here, and it just dawned on me late last night, but I, I, I couldn't quite squeeze it in, is uh, on September 20th to 21st, Jupiter is 90 degrees from Neptune again. And if you remember, I had that on the show in June. And that hard aspects of Jupiter and Neptune make gold rally. So if that's happening on the 20th, after these two both top, you have that Jupiter-Neptune irregular cycle, which most people not looking at planets will never see, uh, mm -hmm. holding this up or boosting it or giving it a buoy. So therefore, I really can't see any significant downside. I think you might get to the middle of the month, and it might go sideways a little bit. And then you're going to get, uh, then if I'm reading this right, somewhere after mid-month, like let's say between the 13th and 20th, the sentiment numbers will start to turn bearish. And then the Jupiter-Neptune square will hit on the 20th, and you'll get a, sh a sharp spike up into October. 
Now, mm -hmm. after that, if you average out all the years, there is a f sharp tendency for gold to decline between uh, October 15th and oil and uh, November 1st. The last half of October, for some reason, is very bullish, uh, bearish mm -hmm. for the inflation hedges. And the other thing I'm looking at is if you go down one more, I mean, how can you argue with this breakout on the monthly chart? Uh, you really can't. And uh, yeah. you've got a very, a very long base, and uh, you know what I think most guys would call an ascending triangle, a girl's do, and then mm -hmm. it breaks out to the upside, and then if you make a count in there, it goes to at least 1650, which is how I came up with the 1650 target. So, uh, yes. what are we 100, 100 dollars from that right now, or 150 dollars? I think uh, about 100 dollars or 20 minutes, whichever comes first. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and uh, so. Uh, if it corrects, where is it going to go? It's not going to break below that uh, that uh, somewhat horizontal blue bar there where it broke out from. That's now support. So if it retraces half of that, uh, where would it go to? Maybe 1450, 1500. So um, this uh, this tells me, and uh, that uh, this is a cautionary tale about 2020. It. Um, if next year is to be somewhat of a crisis year in paper assets, what should you see? Well, weak relative strength in banks, which you see. Banks have been mm -hmm. underperforming because banks get beaten up the most. They're the, the credit extenders. They're going to hit with all the defaults and any crisis. And what else should you see? Well, people fleeing to gold, which you're seeing right here. And also, I'm starting to read stories. I've, I think I mentioned several of them of – Antiques or artwork going for outrageous prices, that's a sign that there's too much liquidity that has to be uh, knocked out. And you should start to see uh, signs in the next several months of, let's say, art auctions not fetching the highest prices as 2020 approaches. Mm -hmm. And again, I think the big stories next year, I think China, we're going to find out that uh, China isn't growing as rapidly as it was was and that anybody who's relying on that is going to be caught a bit short, which would be a number of lending institutions and a number of major investors. And uh, the other stories will be, I think there'll be instability in Saudi Arabia. And I told you after my last visit, a lot of funds have been fleeing the Gulf. Mm -hmm. You know, Arab, Arabs selling off their own stock markets because they, uh, you know, I think people miss in the news that Iran started this insurgency in Yemen. The focus is always on the suffering in Yemen. Yeah, well, it was Iran that created this insurgency and the people of Iran are not happy at all because their econ economic situation is uh, not uh, comfortable. And so they're putting great pressure on the leadership. And so it's a very tense situation down there. And with fracking and new technology and my, my cycles, uh, I don't have oil in here, but oil, the monthly oil cycle points down to the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So if they get low oil prices, they've already spent far too much money. So the uh, situation there is not very – I think these are the fundamental reasons, and, you know, I'm putting reasons in quotes because, you know, the people in the newsroom, if something goes down, they look for bearish news. If it goes up, they look for bullish news. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there used to be a joke in, in New York on the trading desk, you know, maybe it's the latest number of Elvis sightings. <laughs> which caused the market to go up and down. <laughs> or when I when I and when I was at uh, at Value Line, the editor comes in and says uh, one of your stocks is up 20%, which was a big move in the last quarter. What's the reason? I said no reason that I know of. And he said, well, I need a reason for the headline. And he walked out. Senior guy walked into my office and says, remember, son, when in doubt, make something up. So. So by wow. doing the uh, by doing the economic political work, you could start to flesh out the situation and create a future scenario. And uh, I also think Afghanistan is going to be uh, very unstable. I think um, they may have withdrawn too many troops out of there a little too fast, which is quite surprising. So that's going to be a minor flashpoint. And as I mentioned on the last show, I don't think the thing in Hong Kong's over. I think that peaks next June. Mm -hmm. So I think the demonstrations may slacken off here, but I think they're going to uh, heat up again in 2020. So altogether, 2020, there's a, n a number of regions of instability. And remember when I came back from Abu Dhabi in May, uh, the uh, people in the UAE are getting a bit frustrated with uh, Jordan and Morocco. Uh, they're coming, you know, with their hands out all the time to the Gulf states. And, uh, you know, in other words, we gave you, uh, you know, what are you doing with all that allowance money we're, we're giving to you? What are you spending it on? And there's no improvement. You can't just keep coming back asking for more money. So, so even the people in the Middle East think the Middle East is unstable. 
Yeah. Hey, Rich, um, uh, Bill, uh, we have a request. What, what do you see in the stock market? Do you see 3,000 in the uh, uh, 3,020 or so in the S&P? What's your, what's your feeling on the stocks? Well, by the end of the year, I think it'll be in a new high. I think from this point forward, the monthly cycle uh, points up. And uh, the key here, Larry, I really think is sentiment, you know, that old uh, that old phrase that I coined at Payne Weber, uh, by the time this bull market ends, you'll have to go to Yellowstone National Park to find a bear. And yeah. I just went over, I went over the sentiment with you, and you saw how quickly the bullish sentiment evaporates. So yeah. e even though the numbers say to you, uh, the numbers say, uh, we're extremely bullish, when the market stay, starts, yeah. when the market, okay, you want me to stay? I can stay. Yeah, so. no, yes, please stay. We want to hear about your YouTube channels and uh, your, your other things that you have. Thank you very much. Bill Meridian, no, Cycles Research. We'll be right sure. back, folks. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, Bill, do you want to summarize the last three pages, you yeah. know, how the folks can reach you and your book and stuff? That'd be great. Yeah, well, let me just say I think we're in real trouble when the market starts declining and the sentiment numbers don't turn bearish right away. In other words, if people stay bullish thinking it's only a dip that they can buy, that's a sign that you should get out. So uh, that was the last point I wanted to make. So I have a YouTube channel, Planetary Stock Trading, which I haven't updated in a year, I think, and Mastering Geopolitical Prediction, which is mundane forecasts. 
And then we have the book uh, Mastering Geopolitical Prediction, which is 30 years worth of practice in mundane astrology. And of course, uh, at the website we have on the very last page, the Cycles Research Early Warning Service and uh, other books. So. Wow, that's really good stuff. I want to thank you for being on the show, Bill. You do great yeah, work. Yeah, sure. It's been fun knowing you all these years. I remember the time we were in Singapore back in, well, I think it was 88 or 89 with uh, Robert yep. Krause. We had that big uh, big seminar, had a lot of fun there. So, yep. hey, thanks for, thanks for being on the show, and we'll have you on again soon. And keep up the great work. And if anything that you want to bring to our attention, sure. let me know, and we'll have you on uh, any time you'd like to be on. I shall do so, Larry. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye-bye. You bet. Bill Meridian, folks, Cycles Research, Vienna, Austria. World-class guy, let me tell you, folks. Known him a long time. Okay, let's move on. Uh, we've got to end up the show here. Uh, tomorrow is uh, Thursday, Friday. I'm going to be gone for a while, folks. you remember next week I'm going to be gone uh, all next week and possibly even Thursday and Friday of this week. Uh, I've got to get ready for the thing in the U.K., and so I'll take a little bit of time off here, and we'll see. What, uh, what's going on. We've got some great things happening. I've got some ideas for 24-7 to do some shorter term trading using the AI stuff and things that I've been watching uh, that are very, very important for uh, shorter term trading and risk control, which is uh, really good. So we'll watch it very closely. Uh, just for uh, general purposes, just keep an eye at 11.45 today, folks. Uh, there's a really big cycle due around that time in the gold and silver and platinum market. So keep an eye on it at that particular spot. We'll see uh, what happens, if anything. So that's what we're watching here today. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless.